Hey guys, welcome back, or it's your first time here. Welcome. So today we are gonna be doing a little bit of a makeup showdown. It may or may not get pretty intense. So I have two powders here that have been so hyped up recently. So many people have been talking about them and I've been getting so many requests from you guys asking me to review them, to give my thoughts on them. So I figured why not just kill two birds with one stone and review both of them in one video and sort of just put them head to head to see how they compare to one another and also just to see how they perform. So in one corner, we've got the Becca Hydra Mist powder and in the other corner, we've got the Hourglass Translucent Veil Setting Powder. This Becca powder has been so difficult to get a hold of. I have been trying to get a hold of this for like two weeks. It's been sold out in my local Sephora. It's been sold out online. I finally got my hands on it and I've not even yet tried it out. This is a powder that really intrigues me because I have dry skin. I'm sure you guys know that. I think I say that I have dry skin at least give or take 25 to 30 times in every single video, but if you didn't know, now you do. And this powder is supposed to be like somewhat water-based. We'll get into the details a little bit later, but I believe that's the whole concept behind this. So it's supposed to be a pretty hydrating product. So I'm so excited to test this out because to me that sounds like magic in a little jar. And then the other powder is the Hourglass Translucent Veil Setting Powder. This is a new powder from Hourglass. Now the Hourglass Pressed Ambient Lighting Powders are probably some of my favorite powders like ever. I use those almost every single day to set my under eyes. Those powders are really just so special and very unlike any other powder that I've tried. Those are the types of powders that will set your face but will not mattify you. So it will still give your skin or keep that radiance in your skin, but it will also just, you know, keep that makeup locked and loaded and it will do its job. Now this powder is already um, winning just a little bit because I have used this and I have really really enjoyed it. I used it I think like two times, but I'm super, super excited to put these head to head and see how they stack up against each other because they're both from Sephora, they're both high-end. The Hourglass one I'm sure is a little bit pricier. I don't know the price off the top of my head, but I could just imagine. So it's gonna be an interesting little comparison. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this little hyped up makeup showdown powder edition. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below. Have you tried any of these powders? If you have, what are your thoughts? And let me know what you like to see me put to the not put to the test but put head to head next what two hyped up makeup products do you want me to see compared also hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy these types of videos and subscribe if you want to be part of the fam and you're not already because the fam is pretty great i say that all the time but it's very true so without further ado let's just jump right into it Hi. Let me just break down what I have going on my face right now. So I did all of my makeup. The only thing that I did not do is obviously set my face with powder for my foundation because I do think it's it's probably helpful for you guys to know. I'm wearing the Armani Luminous Silk in the shade four. I don't know why that's relevant, but I always get questions and I'm wearing the shade four. And then underneath my eyes, I'm wearing the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Serum Concealer, one of my faves. You guys probably also know that already because I talk about it all the time. Okay, so let's first start off with the Becca Hydra Mist. I'm gonna put it on the left side of my face. So this retails for $46 Canadian, so it's probably like $32 US if my calculations are correct. It says that it is a weightless powder that sets and refreshes makeup for a silky smooth invisible finish and it's formulated with 50% water and glycerin. That's so cool. This is what the powder looks like. It comes with a little sifter and then a little cover over here. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the product on my Sigma brush. This is my Sigma F35. I'm just gonna lightly pat underneath my eyes. Oh, whoa, that does feel wet. That is the weirdest thing. It literally feels like my brush is slightly damp as I'm applying it on my skin. Like it feels like I'm about to mess up my makeup. It looks pretty good underneath my eyes as well. It doesn't look cakey or anything. It just sort of took away the shine on my concealer and looks like it's set it in place. So nothing crazy. I do like the way that looks. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more and we're gonna set like one side of my nose with this. I'm gonna set my smile lines and like half my chin. It really does look very, very nice so far. It doesn't look really like anything on my skin, which is exactly what I wanna see. When it comes to powder, I don't wanna see it. I'm gonna heavily set the side of my nose because I think that's a really good test to see if it will help with transfer on my glasses. I could really imagine how nice this must feel 
in the summer and when i was watching other reviews of this product people were saying that like how good this must feel if you're like really hot and you need to retouch your makeup and it's really nice and cooling and i just kept on thinking that the last thing i would want to do if i was really hot was to put on more powder just because that gives like such an icky feeling to the face. I could totally see how this would feel amazing if you were really hot and you need to touch up your makeup and you use this powder because it, it's, it's wet. Let's try out the Hourglass powder. I just want to say that the collection comes with this. No, it doesn't come with it, but this brush is part of like the powder collection. And I am usually not a fan of brushes that come with collections just because I don't usually find that they're like worth it. Normally I have brushes in my collection that will do like just fine, but I actually love this and I would honestly really recommend if you need a good under eye powder brush and a face powder brush, this is a wonderful, wonderful brush. First of all, it's double-ended, it's a two-in-one. It's great for travel if you want to sort of minimize the amount of brushes that you're bringing. I just love the way that these brushes feel. They're very loose and fluffy, so it just makes for a really, really nice powder application. And the small one is great for underneath the eyes, the larger one is great for the face, and it's just such a nice, soft, also, it's a cruelty-free brush, which is awesome. So the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder, it retails for $55. So I think that's about $10 more than the Becca product. Ooh, shit, it has five stars on the Sephora website, which is pretty good. So this powder is supposed to blur the appearance of pores, fine lines, and wrinkles for an airbrush finish. The formula is infused with diamond powder bougie <laughs> for the most refined light refraction without any flashback and sets makeup for a longer wear um, it's formulated without talc and leaves an invisible finish perfect for all skin tones okay so like i said i have tried this powder twice and i like it a lot this is what the packaging looks like it's really nice and sleek very hourglass and this is what the little sifter thing looks like it's definitely a little bit more cleaner than the Becca one because the sifter is only in the center so you really do get only a very small not a very small but like a small amount of product at a time so that you don't over apply it or use too much powder and waste product which is nice the powder is like a yellowy toned even though it is said to be translucent and the Becca powder is more pinky toned just want to state that difference so i'm just going to go ahead and apply this i'm going to take the smaller side of the brush and pick up some of the product really press it into the brush and i will swirl it around the cap just to really work the product into the brush and then i will cap off the excess i'm just going to press lightly oh oh yeah okay i just want to say that i noticed immediately like as soon as i swiped on the powder that it completely refines the look of your pores like it literally puts almost like an instagram filter over your pores not that the becca powder looked bad at all but the hourglass side really does look smoothed in a way it definitely brightened up my under eyes quite a bit more than the becca side i don't know if you guys can tell it's a subtle difference but it, it's definitely a difference the hourglass powder gave my skin such a beautiful soft glow i'm sure you guys can tell like this side just looks really radiant and just glowy whereas this side it still looks fine but it doesn't have that glow which is fine that's not to say that the becca one isn't nice but if you are looking for a powder that gives your skin a little bit of a glow while also setting down your makeup then you may want to lean a little bit more towards the hourglass one whereas if you're really 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 oily and you don't want to add any extra glow to your skin then maybe the hourglass one is not the best choice for you although the glow that it gives is so natural looking it's not like it makes you super super dewy so even if you are oily i don't see that really being a problem but it all comes down to personal preference in the end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take my vlog camera with me and I'm gonna update you guys throughout the day, maybe like once or twice, just to let you know how the powder is wearing, if it's looking better, if it's looking worse, if it's just staying the same. And then at the end of the video, I will give you my final thoughts on both of these products. Sound good? Great. So right now it is 11:27. <laughs> I actually am going to go and get my nails done. Um, so I'll update you guys in a few hours and let you know how both products are wearing. All right, guys. It is time for the first update. Right now it is close to five o'clock, so it's been six-ish hours almost. Okay, I just got back home. I just did my nails. Okay, first things first. Let's see if either powder held up to the dreaded glasses marks and. Neither did. This literally happens no matter what I do. It's the most annoying thing in the world. And they're both, they're both not bad. I've seen much worse though. I feel like the hourglass powder 
actually looks better underneath the eyes um it seems like it is set very little into the creases of my under eyes it, i feel like it really smoothed over that area whereas the becca side um it hasn't accentuated my under eye lines but i feel like it looks just slightly like slightly drier it definitely looks good but if i'm being really really critical i definitely notice that the hourglass side underneath the eyes uh, it looks just a little bit smoother So I do think that if you're looking for something to set in your eyes and you're sort of like debating between both of these patterns I think going with the hourglass is probably the better option And again, I feel like my under eye on the hourglass side definitely looks a little bit brighter underneath my eyes Which I really really like as far as the rest of the face I think both powders are actually performing really really nicely uh, The hourglass powder like I mentioned does have that subtle radiance the Becca side doesn't have that radiance but my skin still looks smooth my skin definitely doesn't look drier and it's definitely one of the better powders that I've tried like my skin looks really nice and not powdery at all like I really like how it looks a lot more um, after a few hours of wear because I feel like some of my natural oils came through and really melt that powder into my skin and it just looks like it's not even really there honestly what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna see if David has uh, an opinion on what side he prefers let me let me see if he's willing to participate your right side seems smoother my right side seems smoother yeah like glistenier more like this side yeah, or this like side wetter and it looks better more hydrated on the right side more hydrated on the right side yeah Okay, thank you. David said that he prefers the right side, which is the Becca side, I believe. Yeah, that's the Becca side. He says it looks more hydrated. I'm gonna zoom you guys in though. I want you to see the difference in my under eyes. And here's a close up of my skin here and here. Both look good. Okay, I think I'm going to make an executive decision right now and end the review here. I think it's sort of pointless to go any longer than this. It's already been six hours. I could tell how the powder's performing. Like, if it was going to go south, it would have went south by now. Um, I think it's safe to say that both powders are really beautiful. I don't think that either, like, completely outshine the other. But if I had to choose one, I mean, the hourglass one. For sure. It's really rare for me to find powders that I'm actually excited about and I'm pretty excited about both of these So I think that that says a lot So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did do not forget to let me know all of your thoughts on both of these products down below If you have tried them out also don't forget to let me know what other products you'd like to see me put head-to-head -head in another Hyped up makeup showdown and of course give it to a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to be part of the fam so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go work out now and take all this makeup off. So I will see you guys in the next one.